the back connection. I kind of spaced this out so you can see because I don't have an open bench, right? So I kind of like move my cables around. This is not how my actual cable management looks. As you can see, I have this tied off just so we can get a clear picture of the GPU cable connection going into the power supply here. So let's take a look. And it looks like what's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are doing some more uh independent research, if you will, right? We're doing some some testing that I didn't think I would be doing, but since recent reports have discovered a 5090 burning up the power cable that was basically going from the GPU to the PSU, which is a power supply, right? Burnt on both ends. The community has been in a, let's say, a, a uproar, if you will. And it's pretty much been split 50-50, right? So half of the community is basically saying, ah, oh, this has got to be user error. He's using a third-party cable. And the other half is kind of like, nah, this is NVIDIA basically being shysty in their business practices, not giving us reliable equipment, right? And I don't really fall on either side. I'm, I'm more on the curious side of like, okay, we have this incident. It's been investigated by Der Bauer, right? But what else, right? Now, that's where I'm falling at because from what I can tell, right, th this incident was a very specific scenario, right? The scenario was the guy had a 5090. He was running on a power supply that was a little bit older that he was using for his 4090, right? So it was on the ATX 3.0 standard which if you don't know the difference between 3.0 and 3.1, basically 3.1 was made to address the burning issues that the 4090 series was having and how they addressed it. They took the sense pin at the connectors, at the connection, and they backed them in a little bit deeper to where you could get a clear readout to where if this does not have a connection, it doesn't start, like it won't send power, right? On the PSU side, it won't send power to the graphics card. And certain AIB models of the 5090 also added extra at their GPU uh, connection to basically monitor and make sure that the pins are have great contact as well. So a little bit more security features built into the 3.1 standard versus the 3.0. But if you have it on the GPU side and not the PSU side, right, you're not really getting the full protection from that. So what I wanted to see in Der Bauer's video was like a comparison because we knew that the guy had an older power supply. And when I say older, I just mean on the 3.0, not the 3.1, not like it was like 10 years old or something like that. But we knew he had an older one. And we also knew that his power cable or his, uh, yeah, his power cable was third party. And so Der Bauer kind of just recreated that. He used his uh Corsair, I forget the brand, but I investigated that and I looked it up. And his Corsair also is 3.0, not 3.1. And I'm pretty sure he said he used a third-party power cable. Like it, it sounded to me like he said he had a, a power cable with that power supply that he replaced not that long ago. So to me, when I hear replaced, I'm thinking, I mean, unless you bought a replacement from Corsair specifically, and you're using a third-party one. He did mention in his video that he wanted to have more of a conversation around third-party cables because technically, like any power cable that's not a, you know, I guess an NVIDIA power cable is third-party. I don't know that I would consider that to be third-party. Like, to me, how I look at it is like Corsair, the power supply, the cable that comes with that is second party, right? NVIDIA is the first party or whoever, MSI is the first party technically, right? And they made the graphics card and then Corsair would be the second party. If you were to buy, let's say a 12 volt, a high power cable from Amazon, from, you know, Asia Horse or Cable Mod or something like that, that to me is a third party, right? Because the first party is the graphics card manufacturer. The second party is the power supply manufacturer. The third party is somebody else that didn't make the graphics card or the power supply. Right? That's how I look at it. But that's neither here nor there. That was a little bit of a tangent. Either way, I would have liked to have seen him throw in a 3.1 power supply into the test results as well, because he basically showed us with his power supply and that cable after about five minutes of fur mark benchmarking, which is what I'm running right now and have been running for an hour and 14 minutes. After about five minutes, he was able to read out. I have a thermal imaging camera as well. We're going to show you in just a second. 
he was able to read out 180 degrees Celsius at the power supply. And then I think after like two or three minutes, he got up to almost 100 at the GPU, right? And so five to 10 minutes of Furmark benchmark. And if you don't know what Furmark is, this is what they call the donut. It just like stress tests your GPU to the max right now. So right now it is at a 575 watts, 574.8. It's riding right around 100% TDP. My uh, GPU temperature is at 74 degrees, right? That's the hot spot. And I'm just going to show you guys what I'm reading out because, again, I think added context to have just like a subtle comparison between his current power supply and a updated one. And I'm saying updated very loosely because it's not like it's, you know, his was old, old, but it's not 3.1. So, again, here I'll show you guys real quick just so you know I'm not like making this up. I've been running this benchmark consistently for an hour and 15 minutes. We're still at 75C. We're still at 100 and 100% TDP, right? Like this is this is where we're at. We're we're using it a lot. So, let's uh I mean as you can see, he's still cranking frames right now. And if you want to check my AIO to make sure that's 73C there as well. But let's check this out. We're going to get a little read. Make sure I'm hovering over this, right? I'm going to point a laser directly at the connection. And as you can see, that center dot It's reading about 60. 60 is fluctuating between 60 and 65C. Not bad. I'll go ahead and give it a little touch. Yeah, not bad. And again, we we over an hour here, guys. Now let's check the back connection. I kind of spaced this out so you can see because I don't have an open bench, right? So I kind of like move my cables around. This is not how my actual cable management looks. As you can see, I have this tied off just so we can get a clear picture of the GPU cable connection going into the power supply here. So let's take a look. And it looks like, I'll make sure it's hard to get this on camera right here. It looks like, let me put the laser on, right at the connection, we're getting about 47. See, sorry for the shaky hands, guys. Maximum heat in this area is 52. All right, but right here, where that center dot is, I don't know if the camera's picking that up. Yeah, center dot right on top of the cable connection, right around 45, 46. And so again, guys, I mean, this is after over an hour of running it. And I'll, I'll start it over if I need to. But I mean, as long as this screen is on and it's still cranking frames, like right now it's just reading 405 FPS, 403. Like we're still getting the usage. Let's see if I run a, a stress test again, like just run it right back if anything will change, right? Let's just do that. We'll open the score page, close that out. I'm just gonna run it right back. I just wanna see if anything will change. Cause yeah, I, you know, I, like I said, I was running it for over an hour, but who knows? Maybe if I start it over, it'll, it'll heat something up. To me, it looks like the TDP is staying the same. The VRAM usage is staying the same. The GPU usage is staying the same. The heat actually looks like it dropped a little bit, I guess, from when I stopped it and restarted it. Let's check the numbers here just to make sure we're not spiking anything. Let's get a good camera angle and I'll shoot. Yeah, I mean, center dot, that white dot is right around the connection is 52. The hot spot is 65. And we're nowhere near 180, guys. We're not even near 90. So again, I just think this is important context to have, right? Let's go back and check the back one more time before I set this camera down. Because I'm not, I'm not trying to like, let's get right here. Yeah, we're right around 48. Not even, not even 60. <clears throat> So yeah, I'm not trying to like, you know, be a 
a jerk or like debunk debour or anything like that right i just thought as i was watching his video like man i would have loved to have seen you know one of the the up cuz supposedly this is what supposedly fixed the burn problem right so it just would have been good to see if it actually did if you order if you were able to create a situation where it definitely would have burned right at 180 degrees celsius for too long it definitely would have melted right it would have been nice to see did this if just subbing out a new power supply would have changed that scenario i would have liked to have seen that so that's all i'm really saying i think uh in this community it's good to converse it's good to pull our information together so we can all make educated, calculated decisions on these things that we're spending a lot of money on, right? The variables are different. He had a founder's edition. This is MSI, right? I haven't broken down this MSI graphics card to see how many shunt resistors they have. I've heard a lot about shunt resistors these last couple of days. That's not my that's not my my bag. I'm not here to get into all the technical, scientific, electrical engineering. You guys, there are channels for that. Check them out. Get as informed as you will. That's that's not my bag. I'm here to like show you a real world scenario of how things react and how they act and like something that you might actually be doing, right? So I ran, I ran a couple of days ago when I first got the 5090. I ran Call of Duty. I ran Fortnite. I ran uh, what other games that I Marvel Rivals, all at max 4K settings. Everything turned up to the max. I wasn't even getting close to 500 watts of tdp right i wasn't even getting close to 500 watts so when i hear these guys were just gaming and getting hitting 560 570 i'm like man what does battlefield crank like that i never played battlefield man i need maybe i need to try it right but i just wanted to show you guys like what this actually looks like because it's not a test bench right it's not open air it's not uh, a founder's edition it's not an older power supply with the 3.0 standard versus the 3.1. This is how I built my computer based off of what I knew about the 5090, right? I know there there's a new cable and a new power supply type to come out. I got it. I know there is a there's a spec that the recommended spec is for 1,000 watts. I'm going above that, right? This is 1,200 watts. I'm never going directly at the recommended uh, power supply. I just find if you give yourself a little bit of extra headroom, you're probably going to be better safe than sorry. That's just that's just me. And I got, if you're willing to spend two thousand dollars plus on a graphics card, that extra hundred and fifty, you know, to a two hundred dollars, depending on what size power supply you get, I think it's worth it, man. But you will be able to make that decision based off of your situation. I'm just bringing you this information to try and help you make that decision. That's all I'm doing. And I hope I was be able to help and provide some value in this video. If you like the video, please like the video, right? Subscribe to the channel. As you can see, I'm not opposed to going out and getting new equipment and figuring out some ways to research and investigate things to bring you guys more information to the pool. I don't think, I don't think adding information to the pool is a bad thing, right? I'm not above learning. I'm not above people, you know, providing me with new information because I love new information, right? If, if there's something that I said in this video that you completely disagree with you want to fact check me feel free right just try to do it respectfully because i want all to smoke right if you come at me soft or sour i'm gonna come back in the same respect right but other than that as long as we're respectful we can communicate all day i love living in the comments y'all know that anyway that's all i got for you guys man i'm not gonna take up too much more of your time but after an hour and a half of running furmark i wasn't able to even crack 70c on either connection right and just for context, I also did, I'm not recording it, but I did run my streamer cable extension. It was about the same. It was about the same. I didn't run it as long, so maybe it would have got a little bit hotter, but it's about the same. And as you guys know, I game with this, so haven't had any problems with it yet. I also ran this one that has a 2x8 pin to the 12 2x6. Actually, it was a little bit cooler, right? So if that's a scenario that you have, this one stayed a little bit cooler. Again, I didn't run it for as long as I ran the standard. I figured the standard is what most people are going to use, the one-to-one, 12, two-by-six, right? So I ran that for the hour and 15 minutes, but I did try these as well. And yeah, there, there was no issues whatsoever. Only thing I haven't tried is this, right? The one that comes with it, the four eight-pin, because I don't have four of these to use. So I didn't try that. 
but that's also an option. And again, remember, this is not a Founders Edition card, so it could be something with the special PCB that they're using on the Founders Edition that's causing this. I'm not sure, guys. I'm not trying to like definitively say this is that. I'm just trying to give you some extra information so that you can make you know a call, right? Anyway, that's all I got for you guys. As always, one love.